implement it or learn it. So we will go through all those needs also. And then in the later stages, when you are developing content, you can be careful about those aspects. So I'll just share my screen and we'll start with the presentation. After the presentation, we will go to the assistive technologies with another expert. I hope my screen is visible to all of you. You can just nod your head, whoever is uh, right on the video. Can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma ma so, uh, first of all, we there is a term which we are all aware of. That is copyright. I hope we all have heard about that term copyright because whenever we are going to copy something or whenever we are buying something, we know that this is a copyrighted edition. But what actually does it mean? What does it, uh, how do we understand what is a copyright? So copyright is basically a right or a legal right of the owner on any kind of content which he or she has created. Maybe uh, a research paper, maybe a book, maybe just an image one person has clicked all of this because he has used all his uh, presence of mind, his creativity or her creativity to create that particular content. So he or she owns a legal right over that kind of content. And it is basically that I'm saying this property, this uh, content has been created by me and you cannot use it without my permission or without the proper channel maybe of buying that particular uh, CD or the book or any which way you want to access that. So copyright and IPR, IPR is intellectual property right. It's a similar thing, it gives, it describes the rights that the creator of the content has over their work which they have created. Now, what kind of work can we include in this kind of uh, things? That what is all covered under copyright and IPR? So starting from just a poem, if you have written, if you have uh, maybe just clicked an image, you've written a novel, you've written a story, play, you've created a film, musical, I mean, any music piece you have created, whether just a music or a sound effect or itself a full song or a full album, whichever, any drawing, any painting, photographs, sculptures, or any other kind of designs which you have created, all of it is covered under IPR. So now you can relate to it that why do we need to even listen to it? because we are also creating something similar, maybe a video resource, maybe an audio resource, maybe an image, or uh, today you have learned about concept mapping. So you have created a concept map that is a copyright for you. You can definitely access more of the very beautiful concept maps made by one of the faculty uh, in uh, NCRT, and they have launched it under Creative Commons so that everybody can use it, but you have to give proper attribution to that person. So this way, whatever content you as a teacher are creating is also, can be also considered under IPR. Now, how to use any kind of copyright works or if something, maybe for example, you want an image from the online sources and you want to put it in your video. How you can take permission for that, why you need permission, whether it is copyrighted or not, all of it we need to understand. So whenever we are using any copyrighted work, then there is an option of either piracy, which we have heard about for the film specifically, that whenever films, new films are released, a pirated CD comes in the market, which is of very lower cost, than the actual CD or DVD of that film. So that is one use scenario. The second is fair use. Piracy is illegal, fair use is legal. So how to, how, how you can use it? So for this, it can be 
uh, asking for permission from the author or uh, if you are using it for criticism maybe book criticism or book review we are writing we are putting just a comment on that resource we are reporting for the news or just for the teaching we are directly using but not making any benefit out of it so this way is possible to use all those items which are available to us and the second is after buying the license or after buying that particular resource itself so it is up to the need of the uh, person who wants it can decide whether he has to buy it or just need a permission or maybe just need to refer it as a resource that he or she has read or gone through and then uh, one person is writing report or criticism on that so all of these are considered under the fair use component now when we have talked about copyright copyright is a very very restricted thing it doesn't allow you to either reshare also the same content even though you can use it after buying the license but you cannot share it with others they have to buy their own copy so then comes a term which is called public domain i think this term itself gives us a very good idea what public domain is public domain is when some content which is created by somebody it is not protected by intellectual property laws and it is available in public for the free and easy use that is the public domain now here uh, the copyright or the trademark we read on the product or the patent laws these contents are not protected by all of it but they are available in public domain and no individual person or any authority doesn't own all of these works but these are owned by the public as it the terminology itself says now uh, which are those works which are in public domain with what we can find out in the public domain so there is an option that uh, say for example a music piece the the rights for that music piece the copyright for that music piece expires after a certain set of years maybe 20 years maybe 25 years so once the copyright license has expired then it becomes a content in public domain it, it becomes a public property so and then anybody and everybody can use it the second option is the copyright owner or the the content creator has knowingly put the articles in the public domain for the people to use it say for example in case of ncrt all the e content which is created all the videos and audios they are available for the public to use and reuse but they are not in public domain they are covered under certain licenses which gives you free access also but also keeps the uh, ownership of ncrt over there so that is also one option which we will be covering in the next slide now when we are using any content which is in public domain content here means any audio video image any kind of resource infographic ar vr whatever it is when you are using it and it is in public domain then basically it means that you do not need to give any kind of credit to the author of that uh, particular content but of course if you are completely copying it and pasting it it definitely becomes an issue of plagiarism which we now a days face that when a paper or a book is published lot of content is copied from somewhere else that somewhere may be a public domain thing but you cannot copy after a certain amount of the task is done say for example in a research thesis it is said that uh, 10% plagiarism is allowed so that 10% means maybe you are using the name of scrt or ncrt or using some kind of definition which is has to be given in inverted commas that only will make your 10% so it is a very less percentage which is allowed to be copied in your original documents so to avoid that you can definitely take inspiration from them and then you can create your own work but here it is said that attribution or giving credit is not mandatory 
but as an educator as a teacher we will suggest you that always give attribution whether the license is there or it has expired it is always good that we are telling that this this content we have taken from this particular person or place so this will save you from later any kind of uh, problems uh, of copyright issues also then now when we have talked about copyright which is a legal right we have talked about public domain which is a public property the third thing is licenses which i mentioned when i talked about ncert so licenses is basically a very similar thing to copyright but it is very flexible copyrights are very strict so licenses are basically permissions which the owner of the content gives for their content say for example i have created some content so i am telling you what you can do with my content so i am giving certain licenses to it here copyright is still there by the creator but the creator wants that my content which i have created can be used by others say for example now you are here as a teacher you create some content and it turns out to be a very useful content now you would like to share it with other teachers so in that case you can share it under certain licenses which will legally allow them to reuse it so that is the license now license can also be of different types one can be purchase licenses or there are some free licenses also available and i think many of you also know about creative commons creative commons is the most used license or and it is available freely also to all of us to use it and to give it to our contents which we are creating now what is this creative common license this is basically when i have as an e content creator i have created some content i am the owner of that content so i don't want to publish it my content in copyrighted way that nobody can use it or neither i want to go for public domain that it is freely available you can access it so there are certain license which creative commons provide us for securing our works and also giving permission for using and reusing it so there are basically in these licenses four major components these components are visible on your screen right now the one is by by means attribution attribution here means giving credit to the person who has created that particular e content next is nc that means the content is not allowed for commercial use only non commercial the next is nd no derivative that means you cannot make any changes to that particular content then share alike that means if you are making any changes to the content then you have to share the new content under the similar or same licenses so these are the majorly four components and using these components we can arrive at certain licenses what are those uh, licenses first is cc by so the first license which looks like this black and gray box cc by here cc means these licenses are provided by creative commons by means attribution that if say for example i have created a book and i am writing this license for that then in that case i am asking you that this is a creative commons work and you can use it only thing is you have to give attribution or credit to the creator of that particular e content rest you can use it for any purpose here any purpose means when we talked about any purpose here means you can use it for commercial purpose you can make changes to it but you have to then share it all of it it is possible so this is the basically most liberal license of creative commons where it is asking you to only give attribution or credit of the work to the person who have created it now the next comes is cc by sc this also is a very very open license but it also give you one small restriction what is that we will understand now 
CC, we understand that this license is under Creative Commons. By means, you have to give attribution. That is, you have to give credit to that person. And SA means, if you are making any kind of adaptation, you are making any kind of changes in the resource, then this must be shared. This must be shared under the similar terms, same terms, under the same license. So for example, you have created a video and shared with me. It is in Manipuri and I really liked it. Now I want to dub the audio in English and want to use it for the English children. So in that case, I can use it. But when I recreate it with the new version, then I have to share it under same license. So this way, it is not actually a restriction, but it is giving, uh, making it more open that you cannot stop, hold it to yourself. If you have recreated it, you have to further share it. So it will spread more to the educational community. And most of the contents, e-contents, video audios, which are created at CIET are covered under this license, CC by SA. Now the third license is CC by NC. Now here we are very much aware of CC by, what is NC? Now here is, you have to give attribution and then you can make changes also, but you cannot use it for commercial purposes. So if you think that you have created something and it should reach to the teachers, but you don't want that they should make money out of it. They should not sell it. Then you can use this kind of license for that purpose. Now the next is again, CC by NC by SC. Here it is, we are giving the attribution. Attribution is there in all of it. Then NC. That means if you are making any changes or you are using it, please don't use it for any commercial purposes. Once, and also don't use it for commercial purposes. And if you are making any changes to it, please share alike under the same license, under the same terms, so that it may reach to the next people also. Now, the next license which comes from all these terms is CC by ND. Here, CC is the same, by is the same. You have to give attribution and then there is ND. ND means non-derivative. Non-derivative means changes making modification to the e-content is not allowed. So here, you can use it. You can share it. You can use it for commercial purposes also, but you cannot make changes to that particular content. For example, any textbook is written by somebody can use it, but they cannot make changes to those textbooks. These, uh, this allows for the uh, authenticity of the content also. If you want to keep the content that way, then you can use this license. Now comes the most restricted license. We started with CC BY, which is the most free and liberal license. Now comes the most restricted license. This is CC BY attribution you have to give. NC, you cannot use it for commercial purposes. ND, you cannot make changes to it also. So, however the resource is coming to it, you can use it, you can share it, but you cannot make changes and also you cannot make profit out of it. So that's, this is the most restricted license, but still it gives you permission that as a teacher, if you have created any content, you can spread it further and people are not going to take any benefit out of it, except the learning which they are going to derive from this. Now CC has introduced one more license, which is again a public domain, indicates about public domain. This is CC0. That means CC0 is, if a content is having CC0, that means you can use the resource any which way you want. You don't even need to give the credit also to the creator because attribution by is not here. But again, as I said previously, that whenever you are creating any kind of content or using any kind of content, please always give attribution to the creator. Without, with, with giving attribution, you are safe. You will not be harmed from any of the points. Now here you can see all the licenses.
and what all these licenses give us. The first is CC0, which is public domain. It gives you right for copy and publish. It doesn't even want you to give attribution. It gives you a right for commercial use, adaptation, and change in license also. Now, if I come here, CC by SC, you can see here copy and publish, it allows you attribution you have to give, commercial use you can do. You can also make changes, but you cannot change the license. If, for example, you have used some resource which is under CC by SA and you are making modification, then after modification, you have to give the same license to the new content. So this way you can, this table helps us to identify that what one right, one license give us and what is not allowed under that particular license. Now, a lot of questions comes in for where do we find the Creative Commons resources? Where do we go? Where do we search for it? So there are many platforms. You can simply type on Google also, uh, but still there are something. Flickr, you can find a lot of images on Flickr. On YouTube, YouTube also, you can filter your search by Creative Commons and you can find the resources, videos, which are under the Creative Commons. Vimeo is also one platform. Wiki Media Commons gives you a lot of, a big list of platforms where CC resources are available for the teachers to use it freely and uh, easily, right? So now we will also see that where all we can search, how we can search on Google also, we will try to see that also. Now, can you apply CC as a teacher? So, Anybody who is the content creator can apply a CC license or go for CC0 license, whichever uh, license you want to use. But the only thing is that you should be the creator of that e-content. And for applying the license, you can use all the knowledge which we have shared that how you can choose particular license and use it for your content. You can choose the features and then make a license of your own also. And also there is a facility given by uh, Creative Commons uh, itself that you can go there and create your license as per your needs if you don't understand all of it. So I will just go to that website so that I can show you how you can create your license. I will again now share my screen. So here, now I'm going to Creative Commons website. So now you can see on your screen, when I said Creative Commons, so I'm landing on a page creativecommons.org choose a license. So when I click on this option, here, this is a Creative Commons website. Here the options are given what you want to do with, the, uh, with your resource, which kind of license you want to put it. Here is a license which will be showed. Here are the terms which you are going to manipulate. For example, allow adaptation of your work to be shared. If you want, that people can make changes to your work, then click yes. If you don't want, you can say no. So when you say no, the license here will change. Now, there is one more option. Yes, as long as others share alike, the license will change. So this way you can choose your own license. Right now it is, you can, you are just allowing you for modification, then yes, the license is CC BY. If you are saying no, the license becomes CC by ND. If you are saying yes, but with share alike option, the size license will change. Similarly, allow commercial uses for your work. Yes, the license remains this. No, the license will change. Right? So here, I'm also then making no here that no adaptation. When I'm saying no adaptation, essay will go away because essay is required when you are making changes to the license. So this way you can choose your own license. 
now we will move on to the next uh, topic uh, here only uh, in which is oer many of you are aware of oer which is open educational resources and this is not just the e content or the resources we are talking about we are also talking about the software part of it software are also oer or not oer rather copyrighted so oer are basically the content which are which are available openly for everyone to use it reuse it or modify it based on the licenses given to it the similar cc by applies to your content and it becomes oer in case of software there are many softwares which are available which are called fos which is free and open source software now free we we all understand what we mean by free then there is a term called open what is what do you mean by open then open means the back end of the software back end means source code is available for you to change so if you are making changes to the source code the whole software will change that is fos free and open source software same applies to the e content when you are modifying it it basically the content is allowing you for modification then you are allowed to change that e content also so this way you can to go for oer or fos tools when you are creating your content or when you are using a content which is available online uh, openly now oer what oer can be as i said softwares are there then e content what are e contents learning objects any course mooc massive open online course textbooks open access journals open repositories open images any other publication which is available openly is can become a part of oer which allows you for use reuse and share with others for further use remix and make it available to all the people around that is the basic concept of oer and understanding the creative commons so now the question comes how we can search for uh, creative commons videos on the uh, youtube so for that i will simply go to first of all youtube now you can see carefully that when you are searching for a video which is uh, freely available how you can search for it so here i am uh, trying uh, say for example i want to look for uh, something about maybe i want to learn about oer itself so i am saying oer search now here when you search there are filters available on the page these are the filters you click on the filters button go to features and there is creative commons option when you click on creative commons option all the videos which are under creative commons will be visible to you for use further if you have already opened say for example you have already opened this video you can also check the license here when you go down show under the show more button so here you can see creative commons attribution license it is also visible here so you can uh, simply go to a resource go, go to more details and you can find out the license of that particular resource this way you can search on youtube about the oer content similarly when you are going on google on google we generally go for images so for when when i say for example i am going for images and i want to search for uh, creative commons 
uh, image. So I'm just saying uh, search for it. Now here I go to images first. Now when I go here, there are a lot of images which are giving details about the licenses. I want certain specific image which is under OER. So I'll go to tools. When I click on tools option, we, there is one more row which is appearing size, color, type, which kind of images you want. Then usage rights. Go to usage rights. You can choose the license. There are two basically licenses which are given, Creative Common and Commercial and other. So right now I'm clicking on Creative Commons. Now, whichever image is appearing is mostly under Creative Commons. But when you open it, you can definitely check the license for that image. This way, you can search on Google also for the licenses. Uh, this is it about OER and Creative Commons licenses. If you have any questions, you can ask. You can just uh, simply raise your hand. We can take your question or you can write in the chat box also. The PPTs and everything has been shared. We will share the link today with you. Any questions regarding this? Can either raise your hand or you can simply type in the chat box for the questions uh, regarding OER and licenses. Mm. Sir, uh, Jitu Maniji, you can simply go to the license and check what all uh, permissions you want to give and you can simply copy that license and apply it to your resource. Wherever you are uploading, while uploading, be careful about mentioning the license details of that particular content. Say, for example, when we upload on YouTube, there is an option to select a license. So you can select an appropriate license from there while uploading it on YouTube. So if you have no further questions, we can move on to the next part of the presentation, which is on assistive technologies. And for that, we have with us uh, Dr. Rizal, uh, sir. Uh, okay, permissions. I'll just. Click. Yeah. So the session. I welcome you, sir, and the session is over to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Monica, and uh, for giving me this opportunity to interact with the participants from the Northeastern states. And uh, once again, I welcome all the participants for this uh, session, post lunch session on the first day of this IP orientation program. I hope you are enjoying the session so far. Uh, this session, as Dr. Monica has mentioned, we'll be discussing about what all are called as assistive technologies in education, what kind of assistance we expect from them, and what all are the different types of assistance that we expect are needed on the field and what all, what all are possible technologically that we can try to use in our, our day to day life, right? So uh, before I start my session, I request that the session I'll try to make it interactive with your support. So please feel free to ask a question whenever you have one, right? Uh, you can pause me anytime and, and, and ask me a question. I'll be happy to interact and we can learn from each other. So with these words, I'll share my screen and uh, start a brief presentation. Right, so here it goes. Uh, I hope my screen is visible, Dr. Monica. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you so much for the confirmation. So this is me, myself, Rizal Karim Barbia, and I work in CIT and CRT. And uh, just to continue to the previous session, Dr. Monica discussed about licensing and OER. 
so i have released or licensed this presentation under cc by sa 4.0 license so i'm sure by this word itself you will be able to understand uh, when i see cc by sa 4.0 what all permission i am giving you and what all i can terms and conditions under which i allow you to use my uh, presentation right so going ahead uh, what all is uh, the standard international well accepted definition of assistive technology right so assistive technology when it comes to my mind we typically usually try to relate it with different abilities or disabilities or what all these days government of india calling as the bands right so like probably they are the people for whom assistance is required so we start with there but we realize that any one of us so called the able people us we also need assistance many at times many at places right so if you talk about different ability or disability so it says that disability results from interaction between person with impairments and attitudinal and environmental barriers that hinder their full and effective participation in society on a equal basis with others so there are people who might have one or other disability differently able but but it comes into picture the realization happens during their interaction with the environments with us people our attitude with them and the environment that we provide for that interaction right so if there is difference there is barrier in the interaction then that means the person realizes that there is something i which i am lacking which i am differently able so for that i need special assistance right so that means that says that whenever we are designing or create in be it a piece of e content be it a website be it a document is it be it a physical printed the communication material it should be as communicative as possible so that it can cater to people with all different limitations or different abilities that's what if you collect real link it with udl right universal design language that they talked about they say that you design everything in such a universal way that anybody with with these so called different abilities should also be able to accept them with ease or with minimum challenges right so any software device or gadget or system that can assist a person with special need is an assistive technology that's that's the simplest definition i can say so it can be a design and a hardware piece it can be device it can be a gadget or it can be a software piece of software and application software a tool and app or it can be a combination which we call a system any type of such thing that can assist a person with different needs is an assistive technology right and assistive technology is one of the prerequisite to achieve the goal of inclusive or universal education right so if you if you many of you may be already knowing the statistical reality of of um, uh, the previous 2011 census 2021 census report is not yet available with me so it says that around uh, 2.21% population which is a huge figure of our country 26.8 million population are differently able right and and as you know there are 26 major different disabilities but the major are uh, prominent ones as per this census is visual dis dis uh, disability hearing impairment speech disability of course locomotor and physical disability then what we call mental illness mental challenges and and of course there are many other type of disability right and this this table shows disability in terms of uh, distribution of disability by population so it shows that a lot of good percentage of younger generation were also that time are uh, differently able and and if you look at 0 to 9 year age group which who we are 10 year back of this age today so you'd add 10 year more to them but still they are the the people who are still undergoing probably uh, school education college education right so they are still primarily a full time learner community right so a good chunk of people are different table so 
as i was saying although there are 21 standard disabilities sorry i earlier mentioned 26 but it is 21 so there are 21 disabilities identified and recognized but the common one are as i mentioned here hearing disability visual disability speech movement right now the the thing is that technologically it is as of today yet not possible to uh, come up with teaching learning material which caters to all those types of disabilities right we are still developing we are realizing or every day we are trying to find out ways how we can help those people right so so uh, the the assistive technologies that you come across are the popular ones are able to cater to only to some limited type of disability the common ones probably many of you know are kind of assistive technologies are text to speech right and the opposite also speech to text so so uh, text to speech which kind of disabilities are being supported or or addressed or assisted through text to speech anyone else would like to answer which kind of persons we are able to help through text to speech kind of technology any of my audience would like to answer that those who can't speak those who can't speak no those who can't speak then for who unless you uh, Okay, so you are seeing those who can't speak. The people so they can hear. Maybe, maybe, no, no, maybe no. They, they can just write it. Okay, so you are saying that they can write. No, 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 no. Here, here the aim is, see. Those, those who, who are dumb. Those who are dumb. Means those who can't listen. Or those who can't speak. Yes, yes. Those, 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 who, those who cannot uh, speak. Those who cannot see, actually. No, no. You, 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 you look, at the, look, at the, you look at the solution first. As a technology really provides you a possibility wherein you give a piece of text to the computer or to a, to a software application and it generates an output which is a voice, speech for you. Now you imagine a situation where people who give text to speech convert karke de, to they, it will help them. As a Compu computer Visually software. impaired, sir. Exactly. Visually exactly. impaired. Visually impaired. Because visually impaired ke bande ke liye, if you have something written on your screen, unfortunately that person can't read. So that's why if you have a mechanism which converts your written text into some audio, some speech, that person is assuming that that person is only visually impaired and can hear. So at least that person can listen to what is written over there. Right? So that's the right answer. Now, opposite, dekhe, agar ab speech to text, kya ho sakta hai? What you call is deep, uh, deep, sir. Deep. Deep. Yeah. One who can't hear, right? So, one yes, who yes, can't sir. hear, we assume that that person is simultaneously not visually impaired. So, at least that person can read, right? Now, now this, is, this is a technology whose application we are discussing only for different label people. But now see, dictation is something jo so called able log hai, hum log hamare bhi aata hai. Sometimes, sometimes we, we are in a hurry or whatever, for whatever reason, we are not able to type. For example, right? So, samay, us samay so called normal person bhi agar, agar, agar voice type text se, if you, you, you go to Google Doc and, and you, you, you apply your headphone and you start dictating, right? So, it converts into text, right? So, a facility hai jo khali hai, uske liye nahi hai. For, for a more, more, more so, uh, for example, someone with, with, uh, with a disability because of which uh, one is not able to use a keyboard and type, right? So can, can speech to text be helpful in such scenario? Yes, yes. Sir. that will be very helpful. Right. So, so this is a technology which, which has multiple benefits, right? Now, now word prediction. Word prediction is is is. Okay. Have you seen application of word prediction somewhere anywhere? Yes, sir. 
कहाँ पे सर कैन यू गिव एन एग्जांपल एस्पेशली इन मोबाइल फोन्स लाइक राइट बिफोर वी टाइप समथिंग देन इट प्रेडिक्ट द वर्ड्स दैट द नेक्स्ट वर्ड्स टू कम अप वेयर वेयर इन व्हाट्सएप और और इन अ ब्राउजर व्हेन इट्स वर्ड्स समथिंग नो इन प्रोबब्ली मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम इट्स इन गूगल कीबोर्ड राइट 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 सो गूगल सर्च इंजन हैज दिस फैसिलिटी इट इज नॉट ओनली इन मोबाइल इफ यू इफ यू गो टू गूगल सर्च इंजन आप कंप्यूटर में भी खुले अगर इफ आई शो यू क्विकली control and and uh, so this is google right yeah so if i write speech see it is giving me so many prediction speech speech service by google speech to text speech writing right speech to text as now it gives more possibility as a service and i write assistive so it gives more words related to uh, assistance and all this right So as you as as you could see, uh, word prediction, right? An example of word prediction. So uh, so so um, um, whether it 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 can help a person who has who is dyslex dyslexic. Dyslexia, right? Can it can it be helpful? Yeah, it will be very helpful for them, right? Especially, right. especially because they don't write the letters in a proper manner. It will be very helpful. Yeah. So 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 the see the fourth option screen reader, screen reader is nothing but text to speech only, right? But a screen reader is a little bit more than a speech to text, text to speech. A text to speech is that it can only understand a text and it can simply convert to an audio. But a screen reader is something a specialized software program which can read each and every other material also on the screen. So it can, of course, read text. It can, but if, if if you give it to a website, if you open a website through a screen reader program, so it can read what all are the buttons, what all are the tabs, what all are the sub menu, what all where is an image, where is a paragraph, where is a text, right? So all these yes. kind of things. Because you imagine yourself close your eye, and if you are supposed to visit an NCERT website, so how do you realize whether you are inside the text of a section? Or in whether into a header or you are into the inner title or subtitle where you are, right? So unless if you have a simple text to speech which just simply reads everything, you can't be able to make any sense out of it where you are. And unless you you know where you are, how can you navigate? Because while visiting a website, suppose someone who is blind, unless that person knows when the where there is a menu, where do I need to click? So unless he or she knows that, how or she or she is going to navigate and use that, right? So, a screen reader is a software which which will guide you, like in you know with all those things. Are you aware of any screen reader software? Uh, sir, Google Talkback. Okay, Google Talkback. Okay. Uh, Microsoft Microsoft Narrator like that. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, these are good examples. Any 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 other popular software which uh, which are um, used by visually impaired people? Nvidia. Have you have you heard about Jaws? Mm, not really, sir. Not really. No. N V D R. Okay. Then Jaws. J A W S. Jaws. All right. All right. Yeah. Jaws is cheap technology. Just write that, and then you come out mm -hmm. with this this application, which is again really popular. Is is that Jaws? Access with speech, okay. No, sir. Right, so the world's most popular window screen reader. That's what they are claiming. But there are many, right? Mm. So, so these are the screen readers. Okay. Similarly, there are screen recorders. Have you heard of any 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 other any application which can record your screen? Right now, you are recording the screen of this Zoom meeting. Sir. Right, right, right. Wonderful. so um, um zoom zoom recording itself 
other than zoom there are many other before yeah, we many started other. using this uh, vc tools zoom meet and all this before that also there were many screen recording softwares through which supposing you want to make a quick video about how to use a feature in microsoft word so how do you teach that to your student right so you use a screen editing software and you, you yourself do that activity and while doing you record it using the screen editing software at the same time use a headphone like me and record whatever you are speaking like see learner i glow here i click here and this is how i do it so end up end product is a beautiful video right okay. so these are these these are fairly known another another important technology is technology is ocr optical character recognition have you ever heard about that OCR, yes, what it does? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. So can can you can you uh, tell us about it? Uh, well, actually, the optical character reader it helps a lot, especially when suppose we don't have a digital printed page, and it so happen like we have only a handwritten page, and that optical character reader will will help to convert those handwritten text into a digital text. You're right. 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 So this is one example. Thank you, sir. This is one example this gentleman has given. Is that if you don't have a digital text type to text, so optical character recognition is a technology which recognizes character by character. So again, using some software application, specialized software application, image processing software application, it identifies whatever is written in the form of an image and it converts. Not only that, if you have an image, right? So if you have an image, sometimes what people do is when people make <clears throat> beautiful galleries or banners. So in the image itself, people write. It can be digital text also. But imagine such text cannot be interpreted or read by a text-to-speech reader or a screen reader. Right. So in that case, unless you have a software application which can, which has OCR feature, right? So. Uh, there is some background noise, so I request uh, participant to kind of mute yourself. Yeah. So I was talking about OCR. So I hope you understand what is an OCR. So if you have an image in which contains some text, so text as an image, which wherever it is written, a simple screen reader or text to speech converter application cannot read unless you have an optical character right then there are braille displays digital braille displays and of course screen magnifiers these are some of the commonly used assistive technologies right just a moment please sorry so as you know, as I have already mentioned, what is a text-to-speech? It is our technology that reads digital text aloud. It can convert words into audios. It is helpful for people who struggle with reading. Reading speed in a TTS software, typically it allows reading to, to us to control the reading speed, right? So wherever there are TTS softwares, usually we can control how fast it will be read, how slow it will be read. So we can speed up or slow down. Right. Some TTS tools can also read text aloud from images because they already have built-in hey. facilities. Someone is talking in the background. So yeah. Please yeah. Uh, mute your mics if you don't mind. Or Dr. Monica, if you can mute the participant. Sorry, sir. But uh, so there, yeah, there are some background news. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, yeah. So, uh, TTS tools are, as someone has already said, there are built-in text to speech tools in, in uh, our computers, be it desktop, laptop, computer, smartphone, everywhere we have built-in text to speech devices, right? Then there are web-based, some, um, uh, there are dedicated websites of Okay, websites have TTS tools on, on site. So if you go to part, there are certain websites which have automatically already TTS. So if you go, then there is a button which says read aloud. So if you click on that, you don't have to read yourself. The TTS tool will read aloud. 
Okay, then there are third party apps that allow users to download those apps on the smartphone or tablet. And then with that, inside that app, whenever they you open a new website, so that our website, they can listen through the fitness. Right, so here are some examples, some, some simple reference that I have given here. Like, uh, for example, let me just show you what all is there. So this is online OCR, right? Image to text convert using OCR online. So, so what you do is you, you select an image file here and then select the language and output format in which language it is and what is the format you want. Plain text, Excel or Word file. So you click on that and then you can click on convert once you select the file and up to 15 MB of text file, image file it can handle and it can convert process and, and give you the text output from an image, right? So if you have something written in as an image form, which you can't really type too much of text as an image, so you can use such OCR tools to convert, right? I don't know, seems like my, my screen has got freezed or what? No, sir, uh, we can see the your screen, but I think you have to open the PDF. Yeah. No, that's what I'm, I'm trying to understand what is happening. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So similarly, there are, are many, many PTS reader tools as well. For example, so, so this is called naturalreader.com. So it is powerful text speech. So again, uh, you, 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 you can use online reader. And once you log in, so what you do is you up upload your file text and then it converts into speech. Okay. For dictations, of course, as you as some as I mentioned, like if you go here and if you if you open a Google Doc or any other such websites, and uh, what you can do is you, you can start dictating as well. Okay. See voice typing. If you click on voice typing. Now you click here and whatever you speak, it will start typing it on your Word file. So that way you can get your text ready while speaking. Right? So it is it is, it is yeah. So I'll stop here. It is make, uh, making some mistakes because of the way I'm speaking because there is issue in my accent in certain places. That's why. Otherwise, the more, the, with more practice, it can understand your accent better. And of course, you can type. So you can type in different, different languages. All right. All the different possibilities, possible languages are there, including many Indian languages, Hindi, Marathi, Bengali, and many other languages. Right. So this is an example. And there are many other such external dictation tools as well, through which, so click here to start dictating. And you start here, click here, and then once you allow you to use your microphone, then whatever you speak will get typed. Right? And there are many, many other examples, right? So screen readers, I just mentioned about JAWS is there, NVDA is there, then Windows Narrator is there. NVDA, NV access, the NV access thing is the open source, free and open source. If you know someone who is 
have visual challenge can download download nvx nvda product from nvx which is freely available right so this is a screen reader reading software most uh, very very popular from here we can download it and use it right and of course then screen magnification is there in almost all the window operating system as well as mobile phone is there, right so going next uh, uh, uh let's let's see there some of the built in accessibility features available in android phone because this is the most commonly used device in terms of mobile device right so for reading as someone was mentioned uh, android talkback facility right so talk what does the talkback does it is again a screen reading feature that uses this technology to read whatever is shown on our screen so it it reads it aloud to us we can even use it to read our emails and and more right and we can use change the voice different voice male female voice different accent american accent indian accent right as well as the reading speed right and for writing as i said dictation tool is there so as you know in whatsapp also you just press the microphone and and you can uh, record your voice and send similarly you can type also the way it gives you examples right and for people having um, motor skill issue there is this accessibility menu so what it does is that there are there may be person who who can't use uh, or a mobile device or a digital device to have that requires multiple clicks or touch to enter right so technical technologically through this accessibility menu what is happening is that once you enable that with 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 the basic volume up down and power buttons you can do many things right you you can control gestures hardware buttons and navigation right so with with minimal buttons kind of shortcut keys is being created for you so it saves lots of time and effort for sick people right so it makes their life easier to navigate and use right so here i i wanted to show you the so far our discussions were about um software aspect of assistive technology what all are the different software applications or the technological possibilities software applications through which we can assist but there are hardware devices is there right so most common that comes to our mind mind is uh, to to interact with a computer is an input and output right so our our, our input usually are through uh, if you if you talk about a laptop or a desktop is primarily through mouse and keyboard right so if you talk about adaptive keyboards so there are different examples i just just showed and took some screenshot from one of the websites um, um company site that sells different um keyboards so different ergonomically designed adaptive keyboards um, fully left right fully ergonomic keyboard and, uh, there are some single hand keyboards then let me just reduce it so that it becomes more visible right so if you see my screen it says flat keyboard is there expanded keyboard is there and then mouse stick so i will see in the next screen so with mouse stick also how you can control people can control their keyboards right so these are particularly for those people who have uh, a motor disability or or can't can't use their hand eye coordination challenge and such disability challenges are there right so uh, as we know as i was talking about the primarily to interact with or use a, a digital device you have to give your input so that you can get the output right so what are the alternative input devices i just showed you some of the adaptive keyboards others can be head pointers uh single switch entry board device. sorry again yeah so there are head pointers single switch entry devices foot switches so if if someone can't use his or her hand there are switches which can single switch switches which can be controlled to the foot seep and puff switches eye tracking softwares augmented and alternative communication tools uh then there are some i have taken two three youtube videos to show you how different assistive tools are being used so let me quickly show you a few examples of 
first an example of sip and puff switch how a, uh, an assistive device called sip and puff can be used i guess my audio is was not um, there right Dr. Monica, hello. Yes, sir. Uh, could you could you? Okay, let me share again. So when I share. There is some issue. With this Sir, I think some connectivity we have a little low connectivity today. So maybe because of that. No, I want I wanted my my participants to hear the voices. Yes, we can hear. Sir. So this is an example of a sip and puff device. So how someone is a computer using sip and puff device. So he is a web developer. Web he developed website. These are his portfolios. Hi, I'm Charlotte and I'm Jared's mom. Jared is an amazing young man. He has a great sense of humor. He loves spending time on the computer and interacting with people around the world and also at us as a family at home. Jared was born with cerebral palsy and it affects him physically, but mentally and intellectually, he's very smart. Jared uses a sip and puff to access his computer. The sip and puff sends a signal to Jared's environmental control unit on his wheelchair, which sends a signal to the TASH switch, which sends a signal to the IntelliKey switch. The IntelliSwitch sends a wireless signal to Jared's computer that controls a software program called SwitchXS. SwitchXS allows Jared to do anything on his computer by choosing options from a pop-up menu that scans through several choices. When he gets to the option he wants, he then uses his sip and puff to make the selection. He can type, control the mouse, and do anything on his computer. Yeah, let me share my screen again. Yeah, so as as you could hear, uh, even cerebral palsy couldn't stop him from being an, an uh, a graphic designer. He was he was editing images. He was giving input, typing. He was designing website, right? And and then there are examples like uh, Donna Box. I'll I'll just quickly show you another example. I am 14 years old. I like to go shopping at the mall. I have two brothers named Cole and Carter. Hi, my name is Jill O'Gorman and my daughter is Elle O'Gorman. She is 14 years old and diagnosed with cerebral palsy. This is my Dynavox. I use it to talk. Dynavox is an augmentative communication device that helps her communicate with us and her peers and at school. When I look at a picture using my head mouse, the Dynavox talks for me. 
Without the Dynavox, she was had a difficulty communicating what her needs were. So this is a device which allows a person to communicate through a gesture. If you just see, people tend to um, underestimate her ability or what she understood and what she was able to express. I like to write emails with my Dynavox. Before I had my Dynavox, I used a laptop. We started out with just a simple book chart that was broken into categories. Okay, uh, I, I don't want to take any more time by showing this video because our time is very, very limited. And uh, anyway, I can share this uh, screen of this presentation. So if, if someone is interested, one can go and uh, watch such videos on YouTube. There are plenty. So coming back to after having this overview of different software and hardware solutions probably available as an existing technology to ensure accessibility for all kinds of people. Um, now, if we try to relate with our this orientation program about development of e-content, right? So when you develop an e-content with all considerations, you need to keep in mind so that the end product, the developed e-content becomes more accessible, right? So what Tim Berners-Lee said, the pioneer, the father of World Wide Web, who we call it. So Tim Berners-Lee said, web is fundamentally designed to work for all people, whatever their hardware, software, language, location, or ability is. However, when websites, applications, technologies, or tools are badly designed, they can create barriers. So web is fundamentally is, is not an inaccessible de uh, device or a, sorry, not a device, it's a, it's a platform or a medium. But whether it is accessible or not depends on how we design our applications, how we design our technologies and tools. Okay, so if you, if you are, before I go to this slide, if you are, um, are, are developing a video content, okay? If you're developing a video content, so in order to make it accessible, are you ensuring that it has subtitlings? Because the moment you have subtitlings, you can pass it on a different websites so that they can translate them. Sorry. So, when you, when you design a piece of uh, a video, a single video, so are you ensuring that it has separate captions written separately so that the moment you update, upload it on a website so that it's multilingual translation is possible, separating can happen in different languages. So at least it makes accessible to those people. For example, you have developed a language, a video in, your, in, in Hindi and someone can't understand Hindi. So at least if you have the sub uh, the subtitling uh, available some as a, as a text, so it can convert get automatically translated into another language so that it becomes with the help of subtitling at least more accessible. Okay. Further to make it accessible, can you add some sign languages to it so that it becomes more accessible for those who are deep, who can hear? Can you add a sign language? NCRT is are developing lots of is developing lots of sign language based videos. We are trying to standardize Indian sign language as well. Okay, if you are making uh, an image, what all kind of color are you using in that image so that a people with color blindness or color challenge can be able to will will face minimum challenges while. Uh, consuming that piece of image available on your website or on your organization or on your state's website. So these are these are certain criteria that we need to keep in mind when developing uh, e-contents. Now, a lot of us are into developing websites also, web pages also. May not be individually, but at school level, at organization level, right? So unless your website is accessible, all those screen reading softwares that I showed you won't be of any use. Agar 
आपकी वेबसाइट सही तरीके से स्टैंडर्ड तरीके से बना नहीं है तो स्क्रीन रीडिंग सॉफ्टवेयर कैन नॉट रीड एनीथिंग फॉर द ब्लाइंड पर्सन एंड द ब्लाइंड पर्सन कांट मेक एनीथिंग आउट ऑफ इट ओके वन फंडामेंटल रिक्वायरमेंट इज दैट इफ यू आर पुटिंग सर्टेन कंटेंट ऑन ए वेबसाइट एंड दैट वेबसाइट कंटेंट इंक्लूड सम इमेजेस प्लीज एंश्योर दैट देयर इज ऑल्टरनेटिव टेक्स्ट व्हाट यू कॉल एज इमेज डिस्क्रिप्शन व्हाई बिकॉज when the screen reading software will come or have reach that image will encounter that image it can't how, how how do you explain an image so whatever alternative text or description for that image is there that screen reading software can at least read out that here is an image that describing a tiger attacking a deer for example this because you can quickly see and you can figure out that is here is an image depicting a when a type a situation where a tiger has attacked a deer but imagine a blind person what does he understand who who even when even not there it is a piece of the content so who communicates to that person that reader that here is an image it is depicting this scenario so that is what you you, you capture through alternative image or what is text or what is called image description okay also there are standards like whenever there is a website design it should have allow it should have configured keyboard inputs because many people may not be able to use a mouse so if there is a way, is this something in your website certain buttons should be there should be alternative keyboard for example alt 1 alt 2 control some configuration some combination of keyboard buttons i should be able to navigate your menu use your website completely right i need not i can of course do it with a mouse but It should not be that only with mouse I can. I, I should be able to navigate and access and browse and use your website with the help of keyboard only as well, right? As and and transcript, transcript for video I just mentioned, transcript for audio as well um, is required because people who are deaf or hard of hearing as well as uh, uh, can can access them. And when you have a transcript. when when you say transcript for video and audio are same because a video also includes an audio so when you are giving transcript in a video also basically you are giving transcript for the audio part of the video right and not only for people who are deaf or hearing challenged a transcript helps your content it makes your content lot more searchable to through search engine also okay so if you have a piece of content and its transcript is there so when i search a video on a particular topic the search engine can search and give it to me only if it finds out some transcript of my video over there okay so uh with with these these words i would like to stop here so that if there are any question uh i would love to answer them thank you sir So there is one question uh, which i can see in the chat box uh, it it says does such assistive technologies available for indian students also yes 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 now when I, when i say speech to text software software solutions when i say speech to text text to speech dictation so it is it is it is not country specific because when you say dictation so dictation is something which is using your own speech whatever you dictate it is getting typed and as i showed you dictation.io and other websites which allows you to write in different multiple languages as well and ttm screen readers are also there uh, with 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 many screen readers are there today with indian accent as well right indian voice also have, in, in google microsoft have speech, speech reader screen readers text to speech so the output of the speech is indian voice of course there are their male voice female voice you can choose and you can then control the speech is there so yes technology um these are are not country specific or or language specific these are they are available i can say largely for indian as well uh if you have any further questions you can post in the chat box or you can unmute yourself also and speak we may have one or two questions more
so it can be uh, either the session was really good or it was really bad sir one question has come no it was good <laughs> it says uh, from your experience what site offers the most reliable ocr conversion uh, first of all to be frank i don't use i don't require to use ocr very frequent right but the one source that i gave you it is it is fairly good enough it, is, it has really really good uh, quality ocr ocr is nothing but behind an ocr application is an image processing algorithm that is working so the better image processing algorithm it has the better conversion it will be it can even i recognize difficult written and written text also and convert it service Yeah. So uh, I think uh, you received a very good comment. No question, this was the best session. So you should not think that this is not at all a good session. Thank you very much Thank for you. this enlightening session, uh, sir. Uh, it was really wonderful to have you with us uh, for this session. Thank you once again. Yeah, I thank participants as well for for patient listening and and uh, their interaction as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So now, uh, to all the participants, uh, now we will be moving towards the uh, break for ten minutes, and we will be joining back at three forty for the last session of the day. So you can just get uh, refreshed up, and you can join for the session uh, back again in ten minutes. I have shared the link on the WhatsApp group also about the resources where all the PPTs are available. One important announcement, tomorrow the session will start at sharp nine o'clock in the morning. We will give you a longer break because uh, there is some emergency. So one of the resource person, Professor Indu Kumar will not be available after that. So we'll have a session from nine to 10 and then we can have a break for one hour. So you can just adjust your schedules accordingly. That is why I'm announcing right now. I'll announce it later also so that everybody can uh, plan accordingly. And uh, attendance sheet has also been posted in the chat box. Please mark your attendance. Do not post the attendance sheet on WhatsApp group. Only those who are in the session can mark their attendance. So please uh, maintain the discipline of this. Uh, we will be seeing you after 10 minutes at 3.40. Thank you. Yeah.